You really want to get in there, huh? I'd rather you don't. It stinks out here. It smells like rotten seafood. The cicadas are starting to die off, and there's so many of them that it just smells. There's a very foul, if you know, you know, like rotten seafood. They're crustaceans. Cicadas are a type of crustacean, so I guess that adds up and just dead bugs. They don't smell great. I didn't do anything, by the way. These are the periodical, periodic, you know, the 13 year cicadas. I had people say that they aren't. They are. They're red and tiny. The, the periodical, 13 year. Doesn't really matter. He's explain why I'm trying to keep him out of the pool because, the, well, the water stinks and now so does he. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great ish. We've got some stuff to talk about. Gonna have to get kind of real here. And I haven't really figured out how I want to talk about what I was going to talk about. So I think I'm just going to do it. Before I do all of that, here's what I think is going to happen in this video. There aren't any guarantees, which will make sense in a moment. The Palm Tree Company, they called and they're going to be here in a couple of hours. And this is, it's really, really not good timing. I don't imagine I'll be filming the process of the palm trees being delivered and everything like I usually do. But I am starting this video a week and a half early. So today's the 27th. I don't think this video comes out until the 8th, but I haven't looked at the calendar. Something like that. There's a, two Saturdays from now, basically. So I'm going to have them just put in the ones that I need the crane for. So Alexander will be over there. Queen will be over there. And everything else, I'm going to have them just leave them on the patio. Which is what I usually do anyways. And then I move them and we have a big video where I plant everything up. And hopefully that's still going to be what happens here. But it, things are just weird right now. I got a lot of stuff going on outside of the YouTube that is slowing things down. I don't want to talk about it, but I also have this thing in my gut where I'm like, if you're going to talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. And I try and talk about how I want this to be a positive place. Now, gardening is therapeutic, and I don't ever want things to be a bummer around here if it can be avoided and just, you know, stick to the plants. But there are things going on outside of my control that are going to take a lot of my time and it may affect the way things go on the channel for a while, maybe forever. I don't really know. Thought I told you not to get in there. That's okay. He could, whatever. It's fine. I have to give him a bath anyways. I have a family member who needs a lot of help. And recently that family member, I can just say it's my mother. She's 68 years old, had a seizure a few days ago. It was very small. Doesn't look like the seizure did much damage. I don't, there are other things going on they're more concerned about than the seizure, essentially. It looks like there's just some sudden onset dementia. It doesn't look like, I mean, I'm here and I take care of her. I know that that's, <laughs> that's what's going on. When you have somebody roaming around the house at night saying, I want to go home, and I'm like, girl, you're home. That's dementia. It's rough. Dementia sucks. Uh, this is just the start of everything. There are neurologists and things getting involved. She's been in the hospital for several days now. I've been at the hospital most of the day, basically every day. So nothing is getting done out here. I even have a couple plants that have just died and it's okay. You know, fuck plants, family first. In a nutshell, things are changing around here in my life. Caregivers and home health care are coming around to be interviewed because eventually things get to a point with dementia where you have to say, all right, this is more than I can handle getting alarms and cameras set up on the pool and all the entrances you know it's a, it's a whole thing and i don't want to dive into all of that because one it's a big bummer two it's all i think about and this is supposed to be um not just fun for everybody else but fun for me and <laughs> being selfish this is my selfish time that's just a heads up to um really the last garden tour because these palm trees are going to get delivered before i film the garden tour which will be a video or two that comes up before this one and I'm probably going to be walking around that video not acknowledging the fact that there are 30 foot palm trees all over the patio and <laughs> just gonna pretend like, no, that hasn't happened yet. We'll address it in the next video. <laughs> it's fine. It's just the way things have to go. I'm not going to have time to handle the palm trees and then film a garden tour, basically film two vlogs and what, like that's not gonna happen. There's just, you have to have realistic expectations, right? So here we are, that's what's going on. I will try and get footage of the palm trees being delivered. But uh, I can't guarantee. Maybe we'll just be cutting back and there are going to be palm trees all over the place. I don't know. My ultimate goal here is to be able to have some free time, hopefully, to come out a little bit every day and get some yard work done and burn off some energy and relax. And I will film as much of it as I feel like filming because, like I said, I'm being selfish right now.
been a busy few days. Palm trees got here, as y'all saw in the garden tour last weekend. Interviewed five or six different caregiver companies and nurses for occupational therapy and the physical. It's just things have been busy and settling down and on the up and up, which is great. Getting all kinds of things done, but not the stuff outside. That's okay. Let's just look at the palm trees. Have a quick look at them before I start moving and doing stuff with them. I think it's actually going to start storming, so who knows when I'll pick up after this part, but I'm just excited to get in here and have a look at everyone and see how they're doing. Looking pretty good. I am surprisingly shocked. Actually, the Adenidias, you know, they don't do great in their greenhouse. I think I talked about it in the garden tour. There's going to be some repetitiveness, right, between the two videos since they're filmed basically back to back. They don't keep that greenhouse very warm, so things like coconut palms, adenidia palms, anything that likes it hot. Doesn't do great during the winter time. I think, like I said, between 55 and 65, and I haven't asked them about that in years, so that maybe has changed. I don't know. But they look great. Adenidias looking good. Looks like they left this one tied up, so that's okay, because I'll be putting this onto a furniture cart, onto a dolly, that is, and when it's down at an angle, I can get that cut off. These two right here are just the little ones that I picked up on my birthday last year for the Miami planters. There's just a couple little Edenidias double trunked for these two blue planters that are on each side of those steps. I had to pull them during the fall and repot them. I didn't want to send off those nice big fancy expensive containers with the trucks and the cranes and everything. They don't guarantee the pottery so if something breaks you're SOL. So that's why I just toss them into random containers. Random containers that I think might be bigger than the openings on those Miami planters. Those planters are tall and I think they're like 22 or 24 inches wide, but they get very narrow. So I may have to do some loosening on the roots and everything to get them back in there, but that's okay. They look so good, right? They're just really full. Looks like they've opened up some, got a few new rings on the trunks with the Adenidias. That's part of the fun for me is being able to count the rings on the trunks when you get to pull off the old leaf bases as those dry up and you reveal a new ring and the size keeps growing. It's just fun. Nice to be able to see the progress the plants are making. Even the cordylins are looking pretty good. <laughs> I don't, okay, looking pretty good. That might be a stretch. They're alive. I was surprised by that because I know I talked about this. They don't guarantee anything you have planted around the palm trees either. So if it makes it great, if not, then that's just the way it goes. I toss them in there just to see how they would do. And they look okay. I've definitely seen better, but they look all right. Now that they're outside, they should start to flush out and look nice over time. It will be interesting when I go to plant these up because I picked up some of the Harlequin cordolins to plant behind these. And I had I've really grown attached to where I have them. They're over here by the step over here. That was a big circle. I'm doing my best to not make anybody dizzy. These up here, these are the Harlequin cordolins. They're absolutely beautiful, and I've grown pretty attached. I have the sprinkler going, if you couldn't tell. I don't know if that was in frame. I've grown pretty attached to having them on each side of the steps. It's so beautiful when you walk out that door, having them lining things. So I would be okay with not using them. There's two more over here. I don't think I pointed that out. See that right there? Two more right there. You know, maybe I could pull one and divide it up and just pop a couple of them, because I believe there's three to four in each one of those containers. I'll figure that out when I get those planted up, which hopefully be happening here in a day or two. It's not happening today. I still have some work I need to get done in the house. The double trunk Adenidia, it looks fantastic too. Look at it. It's nice and full, has some new growth in it. it doesn't look emaciated or desiccated, I should say, at all. Sometimes you, know, you send them back and, uh, or how do I, how do I explain this? There's a pattern where you can sometimes look at the trunks and tell the changes where it's like, okay, it's nice and bulbous right around here. That's when it was outside. Then things shrink down. That's when it was in the greenhouse and the things swell, swell, swelled. Things got more swell. I don't know. Sometimes you can see the changes and uh, I'm not seeing that. Looks like things stayed nice and steady for everything. Even the Alexander palm over here, not seeing much of that. It's rough, but it always comes back kind of rough and I don't ever care because it has to adjust to being outdoors and once it's done adjusting it looks great. So in a few weeks that'll flush out. It's going to push out new fronds and look really good again. The double Adenidia. I'm wondering 
if I should paint this container. And by wondering, I mean, I'm looking at it going, oh, I need to paint this container, <laughs> right? I mean, that just looks like garbage. It's been a few years since it's had a fresh coat of paint on it, so planting it up is going to have to wait until I'm able to run to the hardware store, which I need to do anyways. I have a Lowe's list or Home Depot list. Need to get some latches for that aviary. Need to get some hose connections so that I can move the... Um, what are these? The willow planters. Those are going to go to my front porch, but I need to get the water set back up in the front yard before I do that. So that's okay. I can still get it moved to where it needs to go when it's time to paint it, which will hopefully be sooner than later. I can pull it back out and get it painted. The bird of paradise. Look at how big it's gotten. This thing's just turned into a monster. That's what they do, right? It's why whenever people are like, oh, this is a great house plant. I was like, uh, really? You think so? I don't think so. They get huge, but it's for a few years. Maybe a vaulted ceilings. I don't know. They are beautiful, though, but um, big, very big, monstrous plants. It had a really big leaf on it. I talked about this in the garden tour that you can you see it. I can't see my... Can't, it's down there in the garden. It's that big leaf. I need to come in here and prune this because it's pulled down the main growth. Actually, I should do that now. The main growth has been pulled down and bent, and that's not good, right? Because it could end up choking out the center of the plant the monopodial growth and everything you choke that out and that can be big trouble so while i'm thinking about it let's just do it go ahead and get that cut off of there because that is important if i were to leave it the way it is well one that would just look stupid because you have a giant leaf hanging off the back of everything but it would also restrict the growth you see how there's a new leaf coming out from this part that's bent down there that's not good so i'm going to go ahead and come come in here and try and cut this out Okay, clippers didn't make it all the way through. That was supposed to be so smooth and seamless, but I'm trying to avoid cutting the new spear there. So I can now, maybe I shouldn't do it right now, I need to grab a stick of some kind to put in here to use to tie that up and wedge it up there. I don't want to mess with it until I'm ready to handle that though. It's just going to end up causing more problems. Look at the size of this leaf. That's really cool. This thing's a monster. Hey, look at that. Huge! That's a 32 inch container right there. That's a big leaf. I'm very happy about that. I love these when they start shooting out those gigantic leaves. That's exciting. Now I just need to find a stake to put in here so I can pull that up and make sure it stays supported. It's, I don't think it's high enough up in there that it's going to be a huge problem. No, actually that's pretty far in there. That's a problem. I need to do something about that. I'll do that as soon as we're done going over the palm trees. The Gossia palms. I don't, they haven't done anything. They look good. Maybe opened up a few fronds. They're not the fastest growers. It doesn't look like anything other than the remains of some roeos survived the winter in the containers, and that's fine. I'll take it. A couple weeks and some sunshine and regular water and fertilizing. Those are going to look brand new again. These were great last year. I'm on the fence with them. Like, I like them. Maybe not my favorite palm trees, but they're really cool and unique looking and fairly low maintenance. They overwinter, according to the people at the greenhouse, much better than the Edenidias do. They've been trying to transition people from Edenidias to the uh, Gossia palms and the Vichis, like the Montgomery palms. Apparently those are doing much better for them in the greenhouse during the winter time. So that's something I'll take note of too, moving forward. I'd like to get a Vichy, you know, the Vichy, I, the, I, I already talked about it, you know what I'm saying, and try that out myself. Uh, that has nothing to do with these guys. They've maybe opened up a couple more rings. They hold onto their leaf bases a lot longer than the Ed and Idias do. So it takes longer to get more exposed trunk on there. They have such neat trunks, don't they? There's something kind of like cartoony, almost prehistoric, like Jurassic-y looking appearance to them. My main thing is as long as they have an open trunk, I tend to like them. So it can be difficult to find palm trees where you get a nice open trunk on them before they get absolutely massive and are outgrowing your homes. You know, Alexander palms, they're great much better than Adenidia palms for indoor culture or for like I do where you have them outside part of the year, indoors another part of the year. But they just, they get huge really fast. This was like seven, eight feet tall, not that long ago, probably four or five years, maybe six years ago, something like that. They reach a size and then they slow down, but they skyrocket up fairly quickly. The Adenidia is not as much, but they don't do very well inside unless you have some warmth and a good amount of sunlight, like a lot of sunlight. You need a very bright room to keep the Adenidias looking really good in the house during the winter time. Whereas the Gossias, you get a nice trunked, fun looking palm, the foliage on them 
reminds me of a Majesty and a Kentia to an extent. Not really so much a Kentia. I guess in the sense that it's more thin and airy, but Kentias definitely have more gloss to them. I prefer the foliage on a Kentia over this. I think that's the only thing I don't really care about so much, or care for as much, I should say, with the Gossia palms, is that the foliage reminds me a lot of Majesty palms, and Majesty palms just, they give me ick. I'm not a big fan of them, but I think that that is overridden by the fact that everything else about them looks so nice. Those are going to go on each side of the steps, and the big blue planters that, you can't see them, there's a giant beach ball in the way. Same thing I've done every year, but if you're new here, You'll see it in this video. I'm going to get them moved to each side of the steps. They'll be in big blue planters. Hopefully we'll get them planted up in this video. That's part of the goal here. And then, like I said, with the Alexander, uh, when I say Alexander, I'm referring to Tychosperma elegans. So it's not a King Alexander. That's a whole different palm tree. That's Archantrophoenix, which is a palm tree that I would like to get. I'd like to get some King palms or King Alexander palms, or just regular King palms, that is, but they aren't as easy to find. Yeah, like I said, it's got some frazzle, frizzle going on up top. That just happens. They tend to always come back looking kind of crummy, but they flush back out and look great in no time. Down below, there's some fun stuff going on. I've already set some of the... I don't... You see it. I don't have to explain it. <laughs> Get those moved out of the way here. Looks like the Pharaoh's Mask called Kajias. Kajias? Pharaoh's Masks. They overwintered wonderfully. They're looking really good. It looks like that's going to be a nice big clump. There are random little bulbs of caladiums that look like they're going to come back and then there's something else over here and I don't I don't know what it is but I think that if I bury it down a little bit it should come back to life it's probably just some other large caladium or perhaps another pharaoh's mask called acacia we will find out I would like to get these wave petunias put in here and I have some lime zinger xanthosomas that I wanted to put in here because I thought that that lime green would look really nice with the pink of the wave petunias and then the black of the diamond head back there and then there's going to be some red from an NSET Morelia that's going to go over here. But these are all things that I still need to think about because well, I have a lot of plants to work with. I also have four extra Redemption Colocasias, which would fit well under there too. But I think that they would blend in an awful lot with the Pharaoh's masks and then the black diamond head that's behind them. So I don't know, figure it out and play around with it. There's another palm tree over here <laughs> on the ground because the pot, the bottom of it, is rounded out so it will not stand up straight. I asked them to either repot this for me when they took it into the greenhouse or to bring me a pot, just a big nursery pot that, you know, they have them all over the greenhouse and I would repot it, but they forgot and that's okay because they're gonna be back in two weeks because, do you remember that if you've been around, there used to be two of these big queens or medium queens, actually they refer to them as the small queens. But that's, you know, in comparison to the other one that I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, well, the, it, one of them died. They don't know why. That's pretty weird. I, they don't lose queen palms very often. So who knows what happened? I'm not all that upset about it because it's just a queen palm and they're replacing it. Just like with another palm tree that I'm going to talk about here in just a moment. This one, it's going to stay on its side for a couple of weeks because it's going to be a couple of weeks till the next truck comes up from Florida with palm trees in it. And that is why there's still a windmill palm over here. I have had a single trunked Adenidia here for a long time, several years anyways, and I love that palm tree. It's actually probably my favorite palm tree I have out here. Robolini's up there too, but uh, it died. They said it looked great and they put it on the dolly and they leaned it back and it like hit the guy's shoulder, which is normal because I always bring them back and then use my shoulder to help lower them down as long as it's nothing too big that's going to injure me. And the crown of it just went and that's, you know, it's head trunk rot. Wouldn't have known because they said it was green, but uh, that happens sometimes. You know, the Adenidias, like I said, they don't do that well there. All I care about is they're replacing it for free. So there's going to be a new single trunked Adenidia coming up with the other queen palm in a couple of weeks, and that will go right here. My main concern is that they bring me one that is of equal size to the one that they killed, right? Because if they just bring me another 20-gallon at Anidia, that would have been the size of the one that I had purchased from them several years ago, then it's going to be shorter. The fronds are going to be in people's faces when they walk out the door. The one that died, it's tall enough that you could walk out and be underneath it. So that is important. And he said that, you know, they're going to replace it with one that's a similar size. So hopefully that's what happens here. Just going to have to wait and see. When the other queen palms get here, they will go right here, right? One right here 
one right there. That other one will be pot up into something that's going to keep it from blowing over. And uh, it's going to look nice over here. And a lot of this stuff is going to be gone, hopefully by the end of this video, because a lot of the stuff that's left over here are things that are going to be used to plant underneath the palm trees. Underneath the palm trees. <laughs> like, this is this is long enough. This could be its own video. I may end up releasing this ahead of the vlog where I plant everything up. This could just be a palm tree update. I might do that. I guess we'll see what happens when it comes out. You'll know what it is. The uh, Robolini. It's looking great. Had to prune off a few fronds because they were like right in the face when you walk out. You know, they can be spiky. So that's dangerous. They need to be up high enough that they're not going to hit anybody. Looks like it has some fresh foliage flushing out on it. Looking pretty good. Almost every year it comes back with some type of scale or mealy bug. And this year, nothing. Absolutely nothing. It looks fantastic. Fantastic. I'm wondering if maybe I should come in here and uh, right in, okay, sprinkler, prune off just these, like these three or four, because everything else is up higher than those. I don't know. I just think it looks kind of dumb, but I'm going to think about that. I haven't planted anything up underneath it yet. I just walked around. Well, really what I actually did was came over here, pulled everything out, and then pulled the mule palm out that was right there, put this in place, and just sort of started stacking plants around it. To play with it and see what I like. This is moving in a direction that I do really like, but again, nothing's actually planted up in the container yet. We'll figure that out sometime in this video or maybe in the next video if I decide to make this its own video. I think I could at this point. Okay, and then the big queen palm. Man, this thing's grown a lot. Y'all remember when I repotted this thing? That was a difficult repot. It looks pretty good. It's at an angle, and that's because it is it's taken root at an angle in the container. So that's something that's getting more and more difficult to control. Might need to dig that hole out deeper, which is something I could do if I have some help. Can get this out of the hole, dig it down deeper, and get it set back in there. And adjust the angle, because I know, not to be nitpicky, but it's facing the wrong direction. It has the right direction. I want it to be turned about, I don't know, a quarter turn? Maybe almost a 50% turn? Because what's going on, what is the front right now, we have this Hidichium that overwintered in it. I believe it's the Flevins, but I cannot remember. And a Heliconia Adrian. Those should be like right around here. They're going to be taller. At least this Hidichium is. And then uh, by doing that, the palm tree will also be at an angle where the crown of it is not so inside of the pine tree. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments here. And that's fairly easy to do. Just need to wait for some people to come over to help me. Because when they get this big, it's kind of dangerous moving them around and messing with them. There were only two guys here delivering the palm trees and they had a lot of trouble moving this one around. Partially because they did not bring the appropriate hand trucks. The two really big, you know, tree carts were off at another job site. So they moved that thing with just uh, basically a regular dolly. It was a really good one. You know, it's like five, six hundred dollar, like heavy duty one, but it wasn't a giant cart. It was actually a little bit smaller than the one that I use out here. So I'm pretty, why am I looking at this when we're talking about the queen palm? So, you know, with the two experienced people, they struggled with it, but they got it done. So it's gonna take me probably at least, uh, I'm gonna need two or three buds to get that adjusted and moved around. I can still plant it up before that though, right? I just need to make sure I'm being mindful of the direction everything's going to be fitting. So that's probably what I'll end up doing is just plant it up and when someone's around to help me twist it and turn it, I'll go ahead and get that done being so good and so patient. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. You're being so good and so patient. I don't know if you should go swim in turbs. It's raining. It's not raining hard. There's no thunder, no lightning. I just feel like we're going to be going in and out of the house a whole bunch. It's the next day. Had to get the garden tour edited and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, I, think, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do here. It's supposed to rain all weekend, but I figure I should at least just grab the cart and get things put where they're supposed to go. That's at least a step in the right direction. It's something I can do fairly quickly although as i'm talking it's starting to rain harder so maybe i should just shut up and do it so talking's not helping it's raining even harder since i started saying that potential side quest maybe this week this tree this thing right here i think that's got to go i don't know what it is does anybody recognize do you can you identify it gets tiny little white flowers during the springtime most of them are faded off there you go that's what the flower heads looked like the flowers are gone and then they drop pellets, like these tiny little pellets, for several weeks. It's like gritty sand over here. And I didn't plant this tree. It's something that hopped the neighbor's fence. 
from their landscaping many years ago and it just appeared and started growing out of the middle of this bayberry and it added a lot of privacy so i was like okay i don't mind it it's probably native natives are good but um i it's it's extremely messy i think it needs to grow it doesn't have much going on as far as trunk is concerned in there like the you know you would think it would right that looks huge but it's not huge like the maybe has maybe this much girth on it down on the inside if I cut it out, that's also going to allow the bayberry, that's all of this right here, to grow back where it's supposed to, or at least put out some growth up in that direction. I can come in here and prune this area like that, and that'll encourage some more upward growth. Because that, you know, it makes more sense to have the evergreen doing its thing here over that thing. I don't you know. Never mind, I went off topic, I'm sorry. I'll be doing this right now because it's raining. I should just let the plants sit and enjoy the rain, but I just, I, I want to do something out here. I don't know. I'll try and move some stuff around and come back at some point when it's not raining. Because it's just, it's going to keep doing this, I think, all weekend. Okay, there's one. It's in the vicinity. Not exactly where it's going. I'm starting to wonder if, if should I even put it here? This is where I've kept it. But the bamboo's gotten so full. I don't know how visible this beautiful palm tree is even going to be tucked in there with the bamboo. I, I don't know. I do know that I have to try and climb up here <laughs> into this thing. Look what happened to my hoodie. I put it in the dryer and it, everything pilled up on it. I hate when that happens. They forgot to cut the string on it when they delivered it, so that's why I'm, if you're wondering, that's why I'm up here. I need to come in here and cut that out. Oh, okay. It looks like I need to sharpen my snips. Good to know. This is kind of a fun view, isn't it? Hey, Turbs, how you doing, baby? Yeah. I'm thinking about just planting this whole thing up with caladiums. I know it might seem boring and lame, but they come back every year. They survive the winters in that greenhouse really well, and I have a whole bunch. Yeah, just a thought. I don't know, something to think about. Not something I need to think about just yet, because I still have all these other plants that I need to move. I, I accidentally did the thing before I get really excited about what I'm doing, and then I did all kinds of things without recording it. I'm sorry. I just moved some things around, though. Right, I mean, that's not that big a deal. I have the willow planters down... Oh, apparently I need to clean off that lens. Willow planters down there by the steps. Those are going to go to the front. Not until I get to the hardware store, though, which will happen sometime in the next few days, because uh, I have to get the water hooked up in the front before I'm going to move those. So they're just going to sit there for right now. I brought the Gossia palms. One right here, and then the other one is sitting over there. And then I started to pull the plants from the other planters to get them potted up. This one's going to require more work, so I said I'll come back to that one later just because it's misting. It's going to make a huge mess, right? So I figure maybe I'll give that a day or two or whenever it's going to dry out. And I went down over here and started to work on the Miami planters. I pulled the junipers out. We'll get a better look at them later, but there's the junipers over there providing excellent privacy. I like them in that spot. I need to straighten them out. And then I got one of those adenidias popped into that Miami planter and I can see I need to re-level. Look at the mess I made. So much mess. So much dirt. So for this one I'm going to go ahead and pull this adenidia over to the tarp that I'm standing on right now and get it loosened from that container and then get it plopped down over there. So at least that's done. And then probably going to just I don't know, do something else for the rest of the day because it's just going to start raining and everything. But having those done is great. And then all that's going to be left to do are these two pool planters. And then we can work with whatever plants I got over there. Maybe hit up a nursery, hardware stores and things. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just excited to be moving and getting these things done. Especially these planters down here. Those Miami planters. I just love them. And if you don't know, I call them Miami planters because that's what the manufacturer calls them. Very impressive. Never had a dog that dives. Also makes me very uncomfortable. That's why I don't like to leave him out here by himself. We got this one pulled out of its container. This one has a much bigger root ball on it. The one that I did uh, off camera, and I'll probably do the next one off camera because the neighbors are, they're right there. They're just like the fence. You see it right by my finger? They're just on the other side. It hadn't rooted out as much into its container. I was able to wobble it free and uh, it was just, it was much easier. This one took a little bit more false. It really rooted into that pot. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some pushing and pulling on the roots. That's okay. It'll be fine. They're tough. Get it done. He's having such a good time. He's so happy right now. And so am I. The sun came out for just a blip of a second. 
it's a gorgeous day. It's humid, not terribly hot, but it's hot enough that when the sun comes out with all the rain, it starts to feel icky. And then I came over here and I stood right here and I realized I'm just standing under the shade of my palm trees. So good. That's a good feeling. He's having a good time. Right, I'm kind of procrastinating because this it's being a butthead. Okay, two down, one to go. No, three down, one to go. Two over here, and then got this Gossia potted up. Looking nice, too. I'm loving those trunks. All I gotta do is this one right here. We're all done. You can plant them up and everything. Not doing that today. It's the weekend. Family's coming over, doing a family dinner and everything. So I need to wrap this up. And then, uh, I guess after this, we'll start... I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to get this other one potted up. Fun part that I have to deal with now where I pull this out and get it to the tarp and scoop it out and... There's really not that much to it. You're not missing anything. I don't need to film it. Yeah, see, all I'm doing here is coming into these containers. These have the spring grow arbs in them from mid to late fall, all the way through winter and early spring. And I move those down to the other side of the yard where they're adding some much needed privacy. I haven't done anything with them. I just set them down. That's not the point here. I'm just scooping everything out. Scoop the soil out. There we go. Like I said, this isn't that exciting. <laughs> Trying to leave a delicate edge here. I don't know if delicate edge is the way to put that. Some edge in there because backfilling these takes an eternity. I think it probably took me close to maybe 30 minutes to backfill this one because you have a margin between the pot and then this being the cash pot that's like this big. So you're just slowly scooping the soil down into that crack. If I can maintain some of this here, then I won't have to do that. But it really seems like a long shot because, you know, you start to pick up a pot and set it down inside of a pot. And it just, yeah, I've already did it. So it's already starting to collapse over here. That's not going to happen. Yeah, see, there's just not much room to work with. So I have to take the soil. I guess it helps if the shovel's facing the right direction. And I told him not to get in the pool. You get it. I'm just backfilling a container. Backfilling a container very, very, very slowly. <sighs> All right. This is good. I feel great about this. All four of these are done. All that's left to do is we'll clean up. I need to pop those three cordelins back in with one of those Adenidias. This one, you don't want to zoom? What's going on camera? What you doing? That one right there that's closest. They uh, popped out. I actually don't know if they'll fit. There's a lot of root around these plants, so under planting them might be tricky. I don't know. I'm not doing that right now, anyways. I just wanted to get them potted up so I can get them watered in. And then um, tomorrow or whenever I have the free time again, we'll go over and pick out some plants, maybe hit up a nursery because I've been thinking if I can find them, I would really like to put some of the chenille plants that, you know, the lipstick, the red things, the red fuzzies. I think that'd be beautiful coming over the front of these containers. Assuming I could even dig a hole for them and make them fit in there. I just, I don't know. I'm hooked on that. That's what I want to be the trailer over there. Okay. Let's see if I can loose. Oh, I was about to say, this has been so hard, I can't get this off. No, that, that popped right off. You don't abrupt change. <laughs> Side quest and abrupt change. This is just, you know, it's a vlog. Here's what's going on this week. <laughs> the dolphins, they're not working. The hosing down here broke. That happens, like, every, I don't know, so often. Every several years seem to have to go in and change the tube out. It's not a big deal to do it, but this piece got fused on there. So last night I rubbed it down with some penetrating oil and just left it there. And I think that that did the trick. Hopefully I'll be able to get this one off and pop a new hose on there, and this won't be a big deal. <laughs> we will see. I actually have a few side quests plan for today. There's some things I need to get done before I can even really think about moving on to potting up the palm trees. That's, that's not really true. I could go ahead and pot around the palm trees, not pot up. They're already potted up. I'm going to be really gentle with this one because I don't want to snap that PVC. Luckily, this one's much more loose. That's going to come right off of there. I was thinking that I need to repot a Dracaena and a few other plants sooner than later because I already have a mix in the gorilla cart that I think that my big, one of my larger Dracaenas is labeled as a Draco. Can't say for sure if it is, but um, 
I can't really do that until, that's not going to fit, um, I need to get the soil out of the gorilla cart to backfill the pottery when I plant things up, and I can't do that until I get the really sandy, barky mix out of the gorilla cart. So, may as well use that as an opportunity to go ahead and repot that Dracaena. I think I might need to go with some more sand, though. Also, I'm going to need to go inside and boil some water to loosen these up. Need to do that. That's not it's not gonna fit on there. It's the same highs highs, same size hose that came off of there. Same one the pool company put on, but uh gonna need some help. We gotta stretch it out. Oh poor turbo. You probably can't hear it. He's whining, he wants out so bad, but I don't feel like Labrador and piping hot cup of water are a great combination. So I'm gonna let him stay inside. He can set this one out. A lot of heat to soften that up. I don't feel like getting out the heat gun. There's not a convenient place to plug it in out here. So I'm hoping that the water that comes out of the electric kettle is gonna be enough to get this done. Oh, I need to put the clamp back on before I do that too. Well, the other end's still open. It's still good. Whew. That was a very, very tight fit. I ended up taking the channel locks and putting them inside the opening and stretching it out in a few different directions that made it much easier i don't know why i have so much tubing here oh because i wanted to make sure i had enough duh I'll probably cut that right around here maybe right here yeah that, that would work there we go i think that should be perfect i didn't put more of the plumber's tape on there because i remember it kind of being problematic last time and this is new tubing, so if that's a problem, if there's a drip or a leak or something, I should be able to pop that off of there. And if you were wondering why this is plumbed up the way that it is, it's because uh, there was supposed to be versatility here in case the fountain ever broke or wanted to put in like a little waterfall in this section. There's just an outlet that you can plumb something into instead of having it go directly underneath the dolphins where it would have had to be more customized. The only downside is you have this tube that sticks out here, but I don't care about that. That's never bothered me. Okay, side quest one, complete. Good, I didn't check for drips. I gave this about 30 minutes to let that tubing soften up, or not soften up, but go ahead and grip onto the pipe. It was all warm and everything. I'm not seeing a drip yet. Whenever it does drip, it's an extremely slow, like one drip a minute kind of a deal. So that's just, I don't know, it's gonna take some time. They're up and they're working. That's all I care about, got the noise back out here like I like so much more background noise which before the audio and the video maybe not the best thing but when you're out here and relaxing it's nice to have that extra sound okay okay you almost knocked my ass over what up I'm trying to fight me next thing need to spray paint this pot I was going to repot the dracaena and then do that but it doesn't make sense this needs time to dry and we're approaching that time of year where hot afternoon showers heat storms that's the word heat storms are starting to become a thing so, may as well get this thing spray painted. I already have my paint right here. I shook this up for a while. I sat down, replied to messages and things like that. I'm so far behind on messages. I don't even think I've replied to any messages in the garden tour. I'm so sorry. Hopefully, I'll be able to get around with to it. I'm still trying to catch up with text messages and other things. I tried to do the best that I could with the time. So, spent a while shaking this thing up. Hung out with the lizard for a minute. Oh, I got the latches and things installed on this. I guess side questing anyway. Finish the side quest. The ADD's here. May as well just embrace it. Went in and put two cabinet latches up top. A couple of these in the middle. <laughs> a couple more of those latches down below. Not getting out. The locks are important because children, nieces and nephews and those things. This is a wonderful animal. It's an iguana. They can deglove your fingers. They'll rip the skin right off the bones. It's not a joke. Dangerous animal, not something I recommend as a pet. That's why I don't ever really show the iguana. That iguana is a rescue uh, from a group and it's supposed to be up for adoption. It's just nobody wants him. So here he stays until someday someone who's qualified can adopt him. It's hard to find someone who's qualified. You basically need an entire room of the house to dedicate to the animal. Why, again, why I don't really show the iguana very often because I don't want to encourage people to get them as pets. They're not pets, not the green iguanas. There are other types of iguanids that are great. The green iguanas, I don't think so. They're arboreal, they need tons and tons of space, they need that higher humidity, and they can be pretty aggressive. They all can, but you know, there are lots of others, like rock iguanas. Check out Camp Cannon. He's got great videos on types of iguanas. The green iguana, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're gonna get one, try and find one from a rescue and be prepared to dedicate a huge amount of space 
to their care. Uh, on to the next thing. Spray paint this. <laughs> See how easy will this be to move? Can I do this with one hand? I think that I can, but uh, should I? Probably not. Okay. Come in here. Doesn't have to be perfect, just an improvement. That's what we're going for here. Trying to cover up all these other spots from the many other times that this has been painted. Start off with a thin wire. This is a good day for it. The air is pretty dry, so should dry fairly quickly. I'm going to have to go through here and pull all these weeds that I had left for Colby. I just realized that. Because if I don't, he's going to eat spray paint. That's okay. He won't mind. He's got plenty of food. I can pull some weeds. He's not going to be missing out on anything by not getting to eat the weeds. He'll be fine this way. I also just realized that this is probably not something I should be filming. Because I'm going to end up with little flecks of spray paint on my lens. That's a bad idea. Huh? What do we think? I think it looks nice. I didn't go through and sand off the old paint or anything like that. I basically just brushed the dirt off. Just remember, this gets moved around by a crane and tossed into semi-trucks and moved all over the place. It's going to need to be painted every other year, probably, so I don't go and do all that. Just get a light coat of paint on there, and that's all I need to do. I also, of course, didn't wear gloves, which I am regretting, because now I have spray paint, and they're on my fingers. I'm using the pink stuff that I'm talking about. That's actually what it's called, the pink stuff. That is the actual name, you know, the pink stuff. Miracle cleaning paste, pretty good stuff. I like it. I went ahead and also put some of that on this pot <laughs> over the labels that have been there since I bought these. And some of y'all, that drives insane, which I can kind of understand, but also it's like, why? It's just a label. But I went and threw some of that on there. Probably should have done a test patch on the other side to make sure it doesn't hurt the glaze. I'm gonna spend a couple minutes working on seeing if I can get the spray paint off my fingers and then give that a scrub. Then repotted Dracaena and get back to the palm trees. I mean, this is all related to the palm trees. I need to clear out the gorilla cart. I need the soil for this. So may as well do that. This had to be painted before I could pot it up. So I guess the dolphins were really the only side quest here. Just trying to, you know, get some little odds and ends taken care of. Uh, that worked really well. Look at that. Maybe a few flecks on there, but nothing left. Also, I don't know if you're, you're probably not supposed to use it on your fingers, on your skin, but... I went ahead and I did it. It worked really well. I'm not saying you should do it because, well, I don't, it's not meant for your hands. This is the Dracaena I was talking about. It's hiding back here in the bamboo Dracaena that is very overdue for a repot. It's a forgiving plant, so it hasn't really seemed to mind, but I think it would just look a lot better and grow a lot better if it had some more room for its roots. These are just a bunch of clearance bromeliads that I stuck down in the container. I'm going to pull those out. This is the container I'm going to move it into. So it's going to go from this 12 inch container up to, I think this is a 14 inch. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's like a 12 and a half gallon trade size. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oh, I got lucky here. There is barely enough soil. I was doing this thinking, oh no, am I going to have to add to this blend? to have enough soil, and that was when I was already backfilling it. So, you know, if you don't have enough soil, you need to start all over, dump it all out, because you need everything to be nice and homogenous. I still need to water it in so the soil can settle and everything, but there should still be enough stuff in here that I can scrape up to fill up any gaps down below. This is a really good upgrade for this plant. You can tell it's going to enjoy it, right? I mean, look at over here. It has a good amount of sun damage on it. This is a great time to get it moved up into something that's well-draining, holds on to moisture, and is really organically rich. This is the same blend I was using a few weeks ago in a video where I was repotting plants. It's basically, uh, okay, actually, I was supposed to just rattle it off, and I don't fully remember. What's in here? All-purpose potting mix. That was the base of everything, and then I put in a bag, a small bag, of Ocean Force potting mix to help enrich it. There's another product I can show you that I like if you don't have that that is a better way to do it. I just didn't have it at the time. Sand, gravel from an old aquarium help increase aeration and then a few handfuls of some old aeroid mix so that had some charcoal in it it had some chunky perlite in it and it had some nice big pieces of coconut chip in there and i also have a small handful very small handful of cotton burr compost blended in there as well so this is a mix that drains well but still holds on to a good amount of moisture and look at how fluffy it is so you push down and it pops back up it's what I want to see. The main thing with these Dracaenas is that they don't sit in water. More so during the winter time. As long as it's nice and warm outside, I don't worry that much about it. Obviously there's drainage, that's important. So there's holes in the bottom of the pot, don't want to sit in water. 
during the winter months indoors, I only watered this maybe once or twice from like October till when was it? Mid to late March or April when I brought it outside. And it was just a little like little drink, little splash of water. It was in a spot where it wasn't getting a lot of light. So it just wasn't necessary. I mean, it shows on the plant, right? It doesn't look fantastic, but there's construction and stuff going on in the house. And I just didn't want to mess with the water all over the place. I know that this is a plant that can take it. But staying consistent with your moisture is important. I talked about this earlier with the palm trees. You can tell the seasons, right? There's summer, there's winter, there's summer, <laughs> there's winter. Because summer, winter, summer, winter. That's not ideal for the plant. Hopefully this larger pot with all this fresh mix will make a big difference as far as that's concerned as far as being able to provide consistent moisture because when they end up rooting into their pots really heavily there's barely even any soil left in there so they're only getting moisture when you water them there's nothing left around to feed off of continually you know what i mean it's like you're moving things into more of a hydroponic type of setup okay and now i mentioned that i have some amendment that i was going to show y'all that i think is just as good as adding ocean forest or something to your potting mix and definitely more affordable and uh, then we can start planting stuff up around the palm trees i don't know if that's actually going to happen today because have people coming over it's going to happen soon soon for you all that is might be a day or so for me so this stuff right here mother earth farmer's market all-purpose mix it's a 454 this is not a high dose fertilizer <laughs> by any means it's similar to your plant tones where it's just something that has a lot of good stuff in it. This has feather meal, blood meal, fish bone meal, phosphate rock, alfalfa meal, potassium sulfate, bat guano, kelp meal, crustacean meal, magnesium sulfate. This has all this stuff in it that I usually have to buy in bags separately. It's all blended together. It's obviously it's gonna be a low percentage of all of those things, but uh, it's really good stuff. It really helps get roots going and keeps things nice and green on the plants. I really like it. I started using this last fall on a few of the plants that I overwintered inside. So I put it around the strawberries and cream heliconia, the heliconia hirsuta, and some of the bananas. Things were heavy feeders, and it really seemed to help. I mean, that's all anecdotal, so take that with a grain of salt, right? I didn't have any type of control. There's a small sample there. There's just a few plants, but I like it because like I said, it's got all that stuff that I like to see when I'm using something like Ocean Forest or a really organically rich blend. And I can just mix it in with the cheap old potting soil if I'm just trying to liven it up and richen it up. So that's this stuff right here. Mother Earth Farmer's Market. I've been liking it, and I haven't used it a ton. I am going to sprinkle it in around the tops of everything after I get them planted in and water that in because, you know, palm trees, they sit in these pots for years. Then I'm getting void of nutrients, and this should help liven the soil back up. Oh, what do we think this is? Does anybody remember what I planted here? I have no idea. It looks like a bulb or tuber from some type of alocasia, colocasia. I, I have no idea. I don't remember. I know that there were some curcumas over here. I had tossed a dying jacqueline in the front, but I don't know what that was. I cannot remember. I guess I could look back through old footage doing this. I'm talking to y'all. I'm watering plants instead. I'm going to go ahead and give everything a light watering because I don't know if I'm actually going to get around to the planting part of things today because I have some family in town and stuff going on but uh one last update to give both my brother-in-laws were here last night we managed to get this palm tree straightened out so the crown's not jammed up inside the pine tree anymore that was difficult took a lot of swiveling and wobbling but eventually made it work come as the palm trees growing at an angle through the pot and the only way to fix that is to move this into a larger container which might be an option next year not this year it's in the ground that's not coming out until there's a crew of people around to help get it up out of the ground or until the wind blows it over. That could happen. I'm thinking I might need to go to the hardware store and get some two by fours and just cut them to just the right size to brace around the bottom so that there's some kind of wedge to help hold it in place. This needed to be deeper in the ground. Thought I had the hole dug deep enough, but I don't think it actually was. It probably should have gone down at least another six to eight inches to help keep it in place. Although had I done that, it would have been a lot harder to turn it and get it to face the right direction because it was really bugging me having the crown of this thing up inside of that pine tree and then having plants I know we're going to get big like this hedicium right there in the very front it just it didn't seem right if I could have moved it that would have been the end of the world all I needed to do is just lift those and move them to the back that was my backup plan if I couldn't get it moved but it turned out to not be that hard it wasn't easy but it wasn't too bad either oh no we have a problem I really like this over here not like this I want to straighten it out move it more towards the center and then take the lava stone and bring it all the way around in here instead of just having it go to the queen palm pot so it would go in front of it. 
It's just, it looks nice. Let me back up. It looks very nice. Having the queen and then the added nitty. It's, it looks good there. And I don't know how good the added nitty is going to look in, with the bamboo. Looking with the bamboo. I don't know how good the added nitty is going to look in here with the bamboo. Now that the bamboo is so full. And it's something to think about. I wouldn't want to leave it like this. I just stuck the dracaena back in there because well, it needs to acclimate. It's repotted it. There's nothing there right now. Won't be for a day or so because I want to let that paint dry before I move this. I don't know, it's something to think about. If I can go get some more lava stone, I wouldn't need much more of it just to bring it around here and to cover up the front of that pot. Also, I had an idea for the pot. Instead of doing 2x4s, I could just sink rebarb down in the ground and let it stick up you know, to the top of the pot right there. That would probably do the trick, too. It might move around a lot, though, because if I'd need to put, like, a cement base or something down in there to drive the rebar into, so that might be... Maybe the 2x4s are the way to do that this year. Not something to think about next year. And now I'm thinking about leaving this over here. Like I said, straightening it out, moving it back, probably spray painting the pot on that crouton... Crouton? Crouton. I should not be filming right now. It's, it's, it's been one of those afternoons. There's too much going on. What I do need to do, though, because it is time to start thinking about planting these pots up regardless of where I put them hopefully that wasn't too loud I just shoved that down in there I need to declutter it's hard for me to think when there's all this stuff over here it's one of the reasons I want to get the gorilla cart cleared out so that I can put things in here and move them around where they need to go without making lots and lots and lots of little trips I could have done that with the soil in there too but I figured needs to get that plant repotted so it just made sense to get that done and then also have it freed up so I can mix up soil if I need to top off any of these containers that I'm working with right now. So I'm going to take all of these impatiens down to the side of the yard where they're going to go and set them. Also where the sprinklers will hit them. I think that would be a good idea because if I don't, then, well, they'll probably die, <laughs> right? These things are overdue for potting by potting. These are overdue for planting by about a couple weeks when I would have liked to have gotten that done, but you know, life happens. I hope I got enough. I think I do. That should be enough to get it. No, I'm not doing that in this video. Don't worry. I'm trying to stay focused on the palm trees. Had the little dolphin and Dracaena side quest, but for the most part, would like to handle those as soon as possible. So you see, I think this would be a good spot to store these. It's only going to be for a few days. They'll be getting morning light over here. There's a sprinkler right there. I can even just set them up here in the garden bed where they'll get hit by the sprinkler head there. You know, this makes more sense to me than having them sitting out in the blazing sun over on the other side of the patio. It's afternoon sun too, it's not even morning sun. Here they'll be getting morning sun and afternoon shade. Actually, earlier than afternoon shade, these trees have put on some growth. Things are getting pretty dark over here. I think I talked about that in the garden tour. That could be a problem. Now, hopefully it won't be. It's not like they couldn't have grown that much in one season. It just seems so much darker over here than I remember. Like, how much could the oak have grown in one year? Not that much. It's already that big. They slow down when they get that big. I think it's 86 feet is what measured with the drone, and that doesn't account for the distance from the ground and up. So that's probably 10 feet. It's probably 75 feet, something like that. It's a big oak. All right, just a few left down here. I think this is an entire flat. These turned red. They looked pink, like a corally pink when I was at the store, and they turned red. I'm not going to use those. I think it was one of those things where I had my sunglasses on, and I couldn't really tell what color they were, but I liked the color I saw. And then they darkened up. That happens. It wasn't as warm out, and the colors hadn't really set in on things. I need to reserve one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I guess I'm out of these. These are all called, <laughs> called for, spoken for, for another project. What else can I move? I should probably finish the thing I started before moving on to moving the other things. That would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Oops. I thought that was going to be so much more graceful and cinematic. There we go. Last one. The reason I was saying that I don't know if I have enough, I think I should, but I wanted to plant these closer together this year so that there's more of an instant impact. And I like to have enough to go over here into this bed also. So... I mean, if I have to go back to the store and get more, I have to go back to the store and get more. It's not that big of a deal. I should really focus on getting these planted up first, though. And again, not doing that in this video. That's a probably a next week thing. So we've already got a lot to handle here. Started one thing, should really finish that before starting other things. It feels so much better when you can check an entire project off your list, right? 
Okay, these guys. Need to get them moved. I also just watered them. They're fairly heavy. I'm gonna clear out all these. I have other spots I can put them. I think I'm about ready to wrap things up out here. Gotten about as much done as I think I can get done before I need to edit this video. Over here I did three of the pink dragon's wings begonia in the back of this planter. Idea here being that those are going to come up and be sort of like a screen behind everything because once this adenidia palm is back over here, the way it's open in the middle you can see right through. And that's always bothered me so I always like to have something planted up here that will create that nice screen. And then uh, I'm thinking, I know I said I was going to spread these around, but I'm thinking that they would look really good in here. The mango swirl, is that what these were called? Yeah, mango swirl, New Guinea impatience. I just really like the way those flowers go with the foliage of the begonia behind them. And then in the front, well, I was going to leave that open because, you know, I just told you about how I went on a little bit of a bromeliad binge and ordered a whole bunch. But I just remembered that these Vrissias over here, the ones that I got in Clarence, that are, dog knocks them over, but they were underneath this dressina. You saw me pull them out when I went to repot this. Those have been sitting right where the adenidia is going to go, and they seem fine with the amount of sun, which is surprising and discouraging. Makes me think maybe there's not going to be enough sun over here for some of the annuals that I usually plant, but I, that's a topic for another time. I can figure that out and just, you know, play around with things, adjust with the sun and the tree's growth. So maybe I could go ahead and take these Vrissias just for now. I don't have to keep things this way, but I could go ahead and plop those in the middle of this container and just see what that looks like. I don't know, it's just an idea I've been toying around with. I'm going to throw everybody up on the tripod here. I'm trying to reduce the amount of time that I have to spend editing, and y'all have been liking the long videos, so I figure I'll just keep on talking while I make my adjustments and just do them nice and slow so I don't make anybody nauseous. Okay, well, it's a tripod won't lock. What's going on here? Come on, tripod. I gotta, gotta bring y'all over here and come back over there. You gonna lock? Good? Yeah, that's good enough. Just said I was trying to keep things moving so I wouldn't have to edit as much and then I immediately set up a new angle. I can't help it when I'm using the nice camera. I just have to get in and find the nice angles. I put together a soil blend with these fillings, what, 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 backfilling, <laughs> everything I've been backfilling over here that I absolutely love. It's my new secret recipe. I'm not gonna tell y'all, just kidding. It's not even my recipe. When I went to the nursery to pick up, you know, a few more annuals and got those coconut palms, they also had ocean forest potting mix on sale for $24.99 for the big bags. Actually, I don't even think it was on sale. I think that was just their regular price. It's just a good regular price on them for like the big bags, right? This is usually pretty expensive stuff. So I went ahead and I got a few bags of that and I just blended it up with plain old miracle Grow, which I know doesn't sound like anything special because, well, it's not. Sorry, my neighbor's mowing. He was on the other side of his yard, so I thought I'd be safe to get away from the noise, but apparently not. Oh, long story, not so short there. I just went ahead and did about a 50-50 blend, <laughs> you know, to save on money with the miracle Grow and the Ocean Forest. It was actually probably more like three quarters of a bag of the miracle Grow with half a bag of the Ocean Forest, and it filled the Gorilla Cart up about halfway, which was great because I needed a lot of soil to backfill these containers and bring the soil level up higher for all the annuals. I couldn't dig down as deep as I usually like to be able to do with these pots because of the roots. The roots have become so dense in there I didn't want to chop at them too much so instead I just lifted the soil level up and I think that's fine. Oh you know actually these are they're a little washed out from the sun so this might not be a great idea. I could just I can just set them here it's fine. I'm not going to actually plant them in here I'm just going to try and put their pots down into the soil to help hold them in place but I'm not going to pull them from their containers because just in case I end up needing to put something else in here that can handle the light in the front of this container. Everything towards the back is going to be much more shaded, of course, right? Oh good, now there's a power washer going. Trying to make it nice for everybody. Huh? What do we think? Literally, the second I turned on the camera, now he has a leaf blower. 
<laughs> as I was saying, just gonna move forward. We floor not, it's actually probably not even that loud. It's quieted down quite a bit. I like the way this looks. I won't be surprised if I end up getting those Donnas, the Neobrigelia Donnas in the mail and saying, hey, I would like those there better. But who knows? Time will tell. They'll show up in, I don't know, a week or so. I got a shipping notification this morning that plants have shipped off of Etsy and that's where I ordered them from on a Friday. Which, why? Why do we do that, Etsy? Etsy sellers, I should say. This has got some great color going on. It's kind of hard to tell because of the shade and everything, but when this is getting some more light, I think there'll be a better contrast, especially once these new guineas grow up and have some mound to them, that beautiful orange it, with the green and the stripes and the red on the Versias. The other thing about the Versias, I got these on clearance. They're about done and spent but they can hold on to these inflorescents for a fairly long time. So uh, maybe they'll last in here for a while, but it's also very possible that in the next month or so, I these, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, these may brown out and have to be cut out. And they do have nice foliage with them, but I'll probably want something with some more color here in the center. So I have a swap out if necessary. Also, I have plenty of other options for things with bromeliads out here. Should I change my mind over here? Got the pack of stackies in the front, the Strobilanthes, Persian Shield in the back. I'm gonna take y'all off the tripod and get in closer on everything. I have a milkweed sitting here. It's a Kurosavaka, one of the more tropical types. It's a zone seven, might be perennial here. I don't know, they never have been, but they're being sold as perennials now because we got bumped up to zone seven. I was going to tuck that in between these, but that doesn't seem like it makes sense. I put them out here, one, because I really like the flowers on this type of milkweed, but also for the monarch. So I have some back here in the pollinator dump hill garden, whatever we want to call it. And then I like to have another one over here and then I put one over there. So there's like a trail of milkweeds for them, but uh, that's not going to work. It needs to be open for the butterflies to even use them. So what I will probably end up doing with this milkweed is potting it up with my lutea. I have an alocasia lutea that I'm going to be putting right here, right in this corner just need to get it moved into a new container and that'll be over there and I can put that in there it'll have more open space and everything it's just a plant I like to toss around in the garden I like to have a bunch of them out here I have some of the perennial milkweed out here too but I just I love the flowers on the tropical type they're very thirsty I haven't watered yet this morning so I need to get out here and do that three more dragon wing begonias in the back again going for that screen of flowers i think that's going to be beautiful i also tucked a bunch of caladium bulbs into both of these containers i think there's probably eight of them tucked in right around here right behind the new guinea impatiens and then uh, i just randomly toss them back over there in that side and in this corner right here on this pot because remember we're going to be putting a bromilli head in the front of this when it gets here in the mail i did some digging through old videos trying to figure out what oops there's a I accidentally dug up a caladium bulb Maybe. Actually, I don't think I put that one there, so I don't know where that came from. Where'd it go? This thing. This bulb. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. I looked through some old garden tours. Sorry, that was a lot of shadow. This, uh, how are we going to do this? I'm going to stand over here. There. That's fine. You know what I'm talking about. That bulb that I said, I don't know what that is. I still don't know what it is. I looked through old garden tours last year, and the only thing that was planted in here that could do that is... The Moose of Florida, and the Moose, I don't know, that doesn't seem like something a banana would look like after being overwintered in a pot and cut down, but maybe where that is is more about where the center of this was. Remember, this was turned more. We didn't get it turned quite as far as needed to, but it was enough, because my main thing was to get the crown out of the pine tree up there, so that just had to do. That was as far as we could turn it, so that is about where the Moose of Florida was. I don't know. I would just have to wait and see. Don't know what's going to happen with that. Overall, I really like how both of these turned out. This one's absolutely beautiful. It's probably the best of all the ones you're going to see today because unlike a lot of times where I try and just do it all in one video, I don't have all the materials. So I just got done what I could and finish them up when everything else gets here. But with the begonias, something I have always wanted out here is to have a ton of dragon wing begonias. They're one of my favorites. So that's why I have three in this container that are going to form a nice little wall. Those fun dangly flowers on them in this container which i am going to move back over here if it doesn't look right then we'll figure something else out but for now that's what i'm going to do and then i came over here to the hot tub wall 
and got these containers planted up just because it's so nice. It's only like 74. Humidity is low. Sun's pretty intense, but otherwise it's pretty nice. And I did two red dragon wings on each side of these U's with one in the planters right behind them with a Colocasia Redemption next to them on each side. So that used up two of the Redemptions. There's one up there, one over here, and then all six of my red dragon wing begonias. There's going to have that nice cascade or not cascade a tear effect by having the one up higher behind everything and then in the front i just did the crazy tunia mayan sunsets with these purple wave petunias i don't remember what the variety of this is but it's a purple wave petunia and then i stuffed caladium bulbs in here too because i want to have the begonias and the caladiums going from here all the way down and uh, i know this isn't this is this is a project for later next week gonna be doing a lot of stuff over here getting a lot of miscellaneous things planted and y'all already know about the robolini got the tropical rose sun patient down below some of the harlequin beautiful harlequin uh what are they cordolins and have this black coral called casey in the front don't know if i'm going to keep that there that's not potted up yet i just really i like all the color right here it's so fun and cheery and happy and beachy i like the tropical rose sun impatience so much there's something more cooling about it the orange has a whole different aesthetic it's very nice but it's more like jungly kind of cartoonish whereas with the tropical rose i feel like it's colorful but it still has some formality to it and it's just a nice looking sun and patient so i like that there i always keep it underneath the robo lady i've been trying to mix things up try and do some different things out here this year with the planters but you know when you find something you really like it's hard to deviate all that much it's nice to stick with what you know you like but uh, I think we've done a good job changing things up out here. Did something different with the Sun Impatience this year. Planted the foreground, which so far is doing okay. Hopefully it stays that way. Underneath the Alexander Palm, there's not that much of an to update on that. I already told you what I was going to do, but I got it done. Have the four large, very large, pink wave petunias planted around here. And I did a lime zinger right here in this corner. And then I went ahead and dug up the pharaoh's mask that was over here in the pot and I moved it to this spot over here just because I thought it would look better to have this go from the diamond head to the lime zinger to a pharaoh's mask to a lime zinger with the end set that's going to be planted up right behind everything it just to me it looked odd if I was only going to have two of the lime zingers in here to have them right next to each other and then have the pharaoh's mask I think this will just look a lot nicer big difference in lighting this one on this side is going to get more light than the other one but that's okay they should be fine like that think of why that would hurt anything i need to tilt that thing up and give it some water don't i can't just leave it on its side until the new ones get here and the new pots show up over here i did mix things up <laughs> in these containers for a few different reasons the tropical orange variegated sun impatient the electric whatever we're calling it, the variegated orange sun impatient I had them in these containers last year and I loved how it looked, but it also was pretty wild. I thought about doing it again, but there's just not a lot of digging room in these containers. These roots have really filled out and I had to do some pruning on them to even get these to fit into these pots. So I didn't want to go in and dig out a huge hole just to get a sun impatient in here. So I went ahead and just stuck with keeping the cordolins in the back, which are going to flush back out and look better in a few weeks. They'll look nice canary wing which has a very nice light green foliage on it they're recovering they were getting way too much sun where i was storing them they'll look better and not too long on this side so this side of the container is going to get more shade this side gets more sun that entire container gets more sun than this one does and that always makes it difficult to plant these up and keep things looking even but i think that i found a happy medium where that should be okay behind the canary wings have a variegated fried egg I can't wait to see that grow up and above everything. Hopefully they have the same vigor as the regular fry ducks. Fry ducks? Fry ducks. And then we'll show you the other one. So the other one has flowers on it. A crossandra. Orange crossandra. Because I just wanted some orange over here on each side facing into the steps. Because those sides of the pots get more sun. Move further in here, they get more shade. So I think that that's going to work out well for the canary wing and the fry deck being more so in the shade these cordolins over here not looking as good as the other ones but like i said they'll flush back out i gave this one a chop i might need to go look no there's a bud there when you chop on these stems they'll branch out like you can see this one starting to put up multiple heads so that one should do the same here in not too long 
And then the fronts of these are still open. That's because, as I mentioned, I'm waiting on those bromeliads to come. I'm going to be putting a yang more than likely. When they get here, I'll sort through them and play with them and see what I like. But right now I'm liking the idea of putting the yang in the front of these. It has a beautiful tricolor variegation. It's very wide. It'd just be a nice, big, wide, chonky bromeliad in the front of these containers. As far as trailers are concerned, I don't know. I always have creeping jennies or something in these, but I'm not hating the idea of just leaving them be. Really. But I don't know. You know that'll probably change. Once the yangs get here and I start playing around with them, I'm sure I'll have something trailing over the front of these pots in no time. And then that just leaves the two Gossia palms. I'm not going to pop these up in this video for a few different reasons. One, I'm doing some inventory management on these Roeos. I need a few more and I want to see how quickly I can propagate some because the discolor, which is what these are, this is a Roeo discolor. They have more of a yellowy foliage with a purple underside. And then another common one is the tricolor. And I have a few of those, but they aren't going to work for what I want them for. These are the tricolors. Very nice. Love their foliage. I don't know if I talked about this or not, so I'll just make it brief. I was going to fill this up with Tradescantia. I'm still going to put some Tradescantia in here, but I decided that... Can we even see what's going on here? There we go. I would like to fill this up with Roeos. And instead of mulching, going in with really nice white sand so it has sort of a beach look to it, like a little dune. Problem is the nurseries just don't have enough of them. I can't find them anywhere. I was only able to find three more, and then I needed two for these containers, one for that one and one for this one. Act, wait, hold on. No, I think this one, the Roeo survived the winter in this one. So I don't know. I'm going to move these out of the pot so that can get more light and see if whatever's left in there will pop back up. Because if it does, then that means I have one more. I'm going to have four to work with over there. So basically, I'm going to hit up a few more nurseries and see if I can find a few more of the Roeos. And if not, then I'll be doing some cuttings and making it work. I also want to decide what I'm going to do with those new coconut palms that I got. And I have another one coming in the mail, which is why I'm not planting these up just yet. Because I really like having these little catharanthus around the bases of the coconut palms. They do really well in the sandy soil they just they end up making things look almost like a little miniature beach when you have the coconut with sand around it and just one little catharanthus that looks so stinking cute so i want to get all those together before i do that my main thing is that everything is potted up it has continuous release everything has had a dose of root and grow to get them going and the majority of like the big statement plants are handled and planted up it made a massive dent over here with everything that's left to plant in fact a lot of what's left to plant over here are things that are going to be used for projects at other people's homes, other projects I'm working on that don't have much to do with this channel. I still have the Ludia over there, and then I have the hibiscus and some things, things I'm going to be using over here when I get this whole area up and going. And lots of color and fun stuff to work with right now. Oh, and I'm still missing a palm tree, so <laughs> we don't want to plant up everything just yet because I have to get this out and put the Adenidia in, assuming there's someone that's big enough and play with the annuals over in that spot. So that's that's everything. I feel like I got a lot done this week, week and a half, really. The palm trees are looking good. A lot of changes since the video started. All good changes. Good stuff going on out here. Okay, is that better? I hope so. I had to, I had to take multiple breaks to cool the camera off because it keeps overheating. It's not hot out, but the sun is really intense. And then I also needed to charge my microphone because I decided that instead of ending things, I'm going to keep it rolling. It's going to be an extra long video. I already know that it's an extra long video because I already edited the first 56 minutes. And yet here we are still talking. There's just more things that I want to get done before I go in for the day. And I figure I may as well bring y'all along with me. I need to get these gingers potted up. These are Alpinia's Rumba Variegated Variegata. I had them on each side of this dolphin fountain last summer and I really liked how it looked. I toyed around with the idea of doing heliconias on each side and then decided that I'm not going to do that because the light over here just worked really well for those gingers. I don't see a reason to mix it up and if the light was working really well for the gingers then it's probably not going to be the best for keeping the heliconias in flower. These are also some of the only containers where I'll use this moisture control potting mix because I can't run drip to them that's just the way the pots are situated being on the other side of the patio it's you know it's a kind of a hazard having too many lines and things running around the top of the pavement people could trip on them there's a lot of controversy behind using 
that moisture control potting mix. I haven't ever had any issues with it though. You put an additive in here to help hold the moisture and so part of the controversy is that people say that your plants don't root out well in them. I, uh, I disagree with that completely. I've used this on numerous occasions in areas where it's hard to get the hose to or plants that just need a lot of extra moisture. When I pull them in the fall, those pots are full of roots. You saw me dig up those gingers several weeks ago when I was cleaning out the pots that they go in, the gingers from last year. It was no joke. There are a lot of roots in there and this is what they were potted in. But then there's also some controversy around the wetting agent and like environmental factors and I just don't know much about it. So I limit my usage of it to basically just being, for the most part, it's really just these two containers that I have trouble getting water to. I am going to add some Fox Farm in here to help liven it up. Not much, I'm not doing as much as I did with the blend I was telling you all about earlier, where I did basically half a bag of the Ocean Forest, about three quarters, maybe even a full bag of the regular all-purpose potting mix, because I don't want to dilute <laughs> the potential for this soil to hold moisture. That is the entire point of it, is I want to it, want to it, I want it to hold on to moisture properly. Again, gingers are heavy feeders, so before I blend this up, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this in there and just help spread around the good stuff for the roots of those plants. You should measure it out. I'm going to measure out approximately that much. I think that that, that looks good. I think that's perfect. I know, it's not really a special blend when I'm just combining two other potting mixes. I just loved the consistency that I was seeing with the regular potting mix that I used yesterday mixed in with that ocean forest. You know when you have a good potting mix and you look at it and you just pick it up and you hold it and you go, oh, that's a good blend. It was just primo. Still not that cheap because you know, ocean forest is like 25 bucks a bag. So it still adds up, but it's way cheaper than planting up everything in the ocean forest. And it had good composition that I think a lot of the tropicals are going to enjoy. And it should be a happy medium for the annuals as far as drainage is concerned. Not so much with this one because, again, it's that moisture control potting mix. But I think that it will be a good blend for everything else I'm going to put into the container with these gingers. Okay. I'm liking the way that looks. If the camera will focus, maybe you will too. It's light and fluffy has a good amount of organic material in there. So it's fairly organically rich, considering that it's partially miracle Grow, which is by no means organically rich, but you know, you light it up with the ocean forest and the Mother Earth stuff, and uh, it's going to drain well and hold on to moisture. Those are all the things I wanna see for those gingers, yeah. That looks pretty, I think that's blended up well enough. Also, pardon the audio, you know, I got the fountain behind me and I'm using a new mic. It's a great mic. It came with two microphones, which is fantastic. So I can swap them out or have multiple people talking at the same time. But it only came with one of the little sound puffs, the little puff balls that go on top, which I have some opinions about that given how much these things cost. Couldn't throw in an extra mic muff, but whatever. Go ahead, get these filled up as high as I need to, and then we'll get to the fun part, putting the plants in them. Something I'm changing up this year with these is I think I'm going to put the gingers towards the back of the containers. I had them centered last year, which just makes the most sense. The alpinias almost have a rosette shape to them. They come out in a swirl and they come up and arch over. They have a beautiful growing habit to them, but that made it difficult to put annuals in the pots with them. That's why I'm thinking that it would make sense to go ahead and put the plants themselves further back in the pots. That's going to leave me some more room to get some color in the front. Yeah, that's, well, there's not much to see with it yet. As far as the annuals go that I was going to put in these, I'm using not, I almost said reject plants. They're not reject plants. They're just annuals that are overdue for planting. So they're not looking too hot, but I think they will. Just gonna have to give them some time. Also need to pay attention to the growth pattern on these, the shape. I want them to be moving forward, kind of, you can see it? That's coming forward. I like that better. Basically, extra plants that need to get potted up. These are some more of those Sun Patients Vigorous Tropical Orange, the variegated ones. They look great, don't they? No, I know, not so much. I'm gonna do one on each side, and then I'm thinking 
Do I need to put more soil in here first? I definitely need to put more soil in here first. Okay, that's better. That's been backfilled. So the Tropical Vigorous, why can I not remember the names of these things? Every single time, Vigorous Tropical Orange Sun Patients. I'm gonna pop one in on each side of the container. And I know that that seems odd because they're, you would think they would grow up inside of the plant and they probably will to an extent. It's also somewhat odd because, well, I don't know, the variegated with the variegated, that's not necessarily a look that I like, but when these have enough flowers on them, you really can't even tell that they're variegated. I mean, you can, but I don't know. To me, when they're covered in flowers, the variegation is just sort of a bonus, not a deal breaker to me. The sun patients, these vigorous orange, they will trail. Actually, just about all impatience will trail if they are forced to. Trail might not be the right terminology to use for it, but you may remember in those Miami planters, the ones that I put the Adenidia palms in last year, I had the vigorous orange, vigorous tropical orange sun impatience in those, and they trailed over the front. And I had some pink impatience in those as well, and they trailed over the sides because they had to. They didn't really have a choice. <laughs> if they wanted to keep growing, that was the direction they had to go, and it looked absolutely beautiful. So I'm thinking, hoping I should say, that these will sort of fill out and come down the sides of the container. Not relying on it, because there's no guarantee that they'll do that, but it would be awesome if they would. And now, I just really need to hope that there's enough room to squeeze this crazy tunia in here. This is a Mayan sunset that's starting to look pretty shabby. All the plants I'm putting in the front of these containers are ones that are looking pretty shabby and I just needed to get them planted up. They weren't plants that I got with a specific purpose in mind. So this seems like a perfect opportunity to go ahead and get them into some mix, especially something that's going to hold on to some moisture. I should probably come in here with my shears and give these sun patients right here. I should probably chop those in half. I'll try and remember to do that later on when I have my snippers out. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Hopefully, we'll find out. You know, I put those annuals in there, not looking too great, so time will tell. The gingers, though, they're going to fill out and look great. This one will start to spread and move forward. I don't remember if I mentioned the impatience in the middle is the compact hot pink. I'm going to get those watered in, give them a prune, and I uh, think that that's about everything. I don't, I don't need to do anything else. I did a lot in this video. I do have one extra of these vigorous orange sun impatience, vigorous tropical orange sun impatience. I was thinking, I'll go ahead and pop that in the middle of this container over here with this areca palm. That might look nice. There should be enough room for me to dig in here and make that fit, hopefully. There are a lot of roots around this plant that has been in this container for many years. Soil still feels pretty good though. It's kind of good actually, I think, to get my hands down in there and have a poke and see what the composition is like. Can I get this out with one hand? I think so. Should be able to do that. Get this in here. I would like to put a trailer in this too. Just could you couldn't even see what I was doing, could you? Well, okay, that's fine. If I put a trailer in here, it will probably be something very small <laughs> because there's not much room to work with there. I think that'll look really good. The variegation and the orange coming down the front of that blue pot. That seems like the perfect fit for that flower. It's gonna look fantastic. I also forgot to mention while I was charging up the mic and cooling the camera off, I came back into these containers over here and I popped some vinca into them because I had a 12 pack of just random assorted vinca with flowers on them that I really like. And uh, I like the way it looks. It's just, I needed something in these to soften them up. Just bugging me having the big dragon wing in the back with the red and then nothing else because the caladiums haven't come up yet. And then the row of color in the front. And I think that that helps with this a lot. Like I said, they're just an assorted vinca. I don't know what the varieties help. They're very pretty. I popped in one tattoo orange with each one of those just to help keep the colorful thing going in the front. I would have loved to have done vinca in these ginger containers down here by the dolphins, but I think that would have ended up being a disaster, right? That's too much moisture. I don't think they'd like it. Not a great combination. They wouldn't play well together. That's my point. Now, overall, I'm very happy with how things have gone. The Miami planters down here, I do wish that I could have gotten those Harlequin cordolins in there, but like I said, with the amount of digging and cutting I'd have to do on these roots to make anything large fit in there, I just, I don't think the juice would be worth the squeeze. And I'm already 
fortunate enough that the ones that were in here last year survived. Yeah, they need to have some time to flush out, but eventually they're going to look really good. Something else I did <laughs> while I was waiting for the battery to charge, I came over here and popped some pink impatience in on each side of these containers because I started thinking about how the impatience trail over the fronts when I was thinking about these ginger planters and what I was going to say when I talked about them. And I was looking at these thinking, ah, that would be nice. I think some more color underneath there just would be great, especially with the orange with the crossandra to have that pink down in there. It's behind everything, which I know seems odd, but that's where I put them last year and they came up and they looked wonderful. An extra pop of color, it does something. In each one of those, they don't look like much right now, but remember, they're going to fill out. They're going to get nice and big, a nice big mound of pink in the back behind everything. Lots of color happening in these. I don't have the great big dramatic vigorous orange tropical sun patients in the fronts but i think that that's going to work out just fine with what i'm going to be doing with those bromeliads when those show up something i'm very excited about when those get here and the adenidia palm shows up i can finish up everything else look at how great everything looks right now i noticed when i was editing the video at the very start when i was talking about all the stuff that had been going on which by the way it's been about a week week and a half since that and things are much better now still room for improvement kind of learning as we go here but things have gotten a lot better figure i should have an update on that but the garden just looks like it has done so much compared to the beginning of this video in only a week and a half time the sudden patients over here they filled out wonderfully it's so nice having the palm back over there there's just so much color everything is so lush right now I'm loving it. It's good to know because there are certain aspects of things out here where I feel like I'm so far behind and then there are other things where I feel like I'm way ahead. Like as far as, well, cleaning because, you know, I had to get everything off the patio a couple months ago to get the thing resurfaced so things are more organized than they ever have been. These ginger planters, like that's something I could have done a month ago, but I was doing the whole, oh, what am I going to put in them? And I decided, just screw it, just put it, the gingers in there, it's fine. As I mentioned, I'm trying to mix things up. I don't want to do the same thing every single year. That's why I'm holding off on potting up these hydrangea planters. I want to poke around some nurseries some more and see what I find instead of just doing the same old, same old, which I may end up doing. I may end up just popping big impatience underneath them. I don't really know, but it's late enough in the year that whatever I get, I want it to be big. Those little compact pink sun patients, those weren't going to do it. I don't want to wait until August for those to be nice and full of flowers. Whereas over here with the Gossia palms, I'm doing more of a minimalist thing because <laughs> like I said, all this, all this stuff, it's not going to be in there, right? It's going to be just a few of these things and whatever I have left, I'm going to mix in with the coconut palms or have in the front over here when I plant up all those roeos. So I want to be able to see the sand inside of the containers. So that's the next thing I have to do is go get the sand. I think I mentioned that it's a bit of a drive and I'm not sure if they'll even sell to me because I don't have a contractor number but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do work my magic hopefully they'll sell to me nice white sand it's the only place that I can find it are like industrial uh, construction <laughs> type stores at Lowe's and Home Depot like the pool filter sand around here is brown and gray it's just, it doesn't look good Put that sand and then the bromeliads will come in pardon the fan it's still on which oh that feels really nice felt really nice and then uh lots of little repots got a lot of little things to repot and just a few annuals left really so that's going to be fun. I'm going to be working all that next week. Maybe run some errands. Sorry I didn't bring you along with me to the nursery. I know mentioned in the beginning of the video that maybe we'd go to a nursery. It was just, I was quick in and out. Didn't have a lot of time to run the errands. So you didn't miss much. Everything that I think was worth seeing, I bought and brought home. So you got to see it. Okay, I have a lot of plants that have just been potted up and really, really could use a drink. The air's fairly dry today. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry the beginning of the video was a bit of a downer, but like I said, everything's getting better now. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? I'm sure y'all are way ahead of me. You probably got your annuals planted up a month ago like you should have. Don't really know why I'm talking like that. It's not like I haven't been doing stuff out here. <laughs> I've gotten a lot done. Right, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.